Jainism was born in India about the same period as Buddhism. It was established by Mahavira, c. 599 to 527 BC, in about 500 BC. He was born near Patna in what is now Bihar state. Mahavira like Buddha belonged to the warrior caste. Mahavira was called Jina meaning the big winner and from this name was derived the name of the religion. In many senses Jainism is similar to Buddhism. Both developed as a dissension to the Brahmanic philosophy that was dominant during that period in Northeast India. Both share a belief in reincarnation which eventually leads to liberation. Jainism is different to Buddhism in its ascetic beliefs. Both these religions emphasize non-violence, but non-violence is the main core in Jainism. Mahavira just like Buddha isn't the first prophet of his religion. In Jainism like Buddhism there is a belief in reincarnation which eventually leads to liberation. Neither of these religions their religious philosophy around worship. But Jainism is different than Buddhism in its ascetic beliefs. Both these religions emphasis on non-violence, but in Jainism non-violence is its main core. Jains believe that everything has life and this also includes stones, sand, trees and every other thing. The fact that trees' breath came to be known to the science world only from the 20th century. Mahavira who believed that everything has life and also believed in non-violence practically didn't eat anything causing his self-starvation to death. Mahavira was also extremely ascetic and walked around completely naked because of his renouncement of life. After years of hardship and meditation, he attained enlightenment. Thereafter, he preached Jainism for about 30 years and died at Pava also in Bihar, in 527 BC. Mahavira's religion followers are less extreme than him in diets. They are vegetarians. But the religious Jains will do everything possible to prevent hurting any being. They won't walk in fields where there are insects to prevent the possibility of stepping on them. They also cover their mouth to prevent the possibility of swallowing small invisible microbes. They mostly do not work in professions where there is a possibility of killing any living being like in agriculture instead professions like banking and business. But it is not clear what came first, businessmen who adopted Jain philosophy because it was easy for them to follow or Janish philosophy which convinced the Jains to adopt non-violent professions. There are two Jain philosophies. Shwetambar and Digambar Digambar monks like Mahavira don't wear any clothes, but normally they don't walk like that outside their temples. The Digambars include among them only men. The Shwetambar's monks wear white clothes, and they include women. The Teachings of Lord Mahavira Lord Mahavira was born on 30th March 599 BC and attained the Nirvana in the year 527 BC at the age of 72. He was a contemporary of Lord Buddha. He was the 24th and the last of the Tirthankars. The present form of Jainism was shaped by him. The cardinal principles of Jainism are 1. Ahinsa, non-violence 2. Anekantavada, multiplicity of views 3. Aprigraha, non-possessiveness 4. Non-stealing 5. Brahmacharya The first and the third are quite simple to understand, but the second one needs some explanation. It is dealt under multiplicity of viewpoints and relativism, syadvada, in the Jain literature. Difference of viewpoints, quite often, add to the knowledge and one should infer, infer, 
only after hearing diverse views on any subject. If it is not done, then the conclusions reached could be biased or incorrect. It provides for the tolerance for the views of the others. One can have a better perception only after hearing others. For example, we are all familiar with the story of the eight blind men and an elephant. There the views expressed about the elephant by each of the blind men were correct but only partial knowledge could be obtained from any one view. The total knowledge about the elephant could be had only by listening to all of them. An object can, on occasion, be described by two completely opposite statements, i. it is, asti, and it is not, nasti. These two statements can be made referring to 1. Substance, 2. Place, 3. Time, and 4. Form. Let us take an example of a piece of furniture. A piece of furniture made of jungle wood is not made of sandal wood. Similarly, it could be located in a given room but not in other rooms. Thus, it can be specified in either way which seem to be opposite to each other. This way of specification is called asti nasti vada. Another set of logic lines has been developed by the Jain thinkers which postulate that there can be as many as seven modes of prediction in a given case. This introduces an element of uncertainty in the predictions and therefore introduces the concept of probability. This is called syadvada or the doctrine of maybe. If we consider the Janist and the Vedantic philosophies, we will find that both are correct in their own ways. They do not contradict each other. The Jain philosophy does not go into the depth of the process of creation as does the Vedantism and therefore it, Vedantism, arrives at the conclusion of the God as the first cause. On the other hand, the Jainism comes up with the understanding of the complexity of the universe for the common humans and proposes the Syadvada which is a marvelous concept of accommodation which is necessary for the correct evaluation of anything. The Jainism defines life in almost everything and therefore preaches non-violence of extreme degree. In summary, the Jains consider the highest ideal, Tirthankara who possesses infinite knowledge, infinite bliss and infinite power. This blissful state is similar to that of Vedantic Chitananda. Jainism makes distinction between Arhat and Siddha which are analogous to the Vedantic Jivan Mukta, free form life, and Videha Mukta, free from body. A Jivan Mukta might also be a Videha Mukta as in the case of King Janka. Tithankaras are those Siddhas who profound the truth during their lifetime which is a higher thing. The Jans have Arhats, the Siddhas, and the Tirthankaras who in the simpler terms and in the corresponding manner are those who deserve, those who accomplish, and those who sanctify. It is possible for every man to attain the highest state. Tirthankaras take the place of God in the Jain philosophy. Jainism begins with a serious concern for the human soul in its relationship with the laws governing existence in the universe, with other living beings, and to its own future state in eternity. First and foremost, it is a religion of the heart, the golden rule is ahimsa or non-violence in all, all parts of a person, mental, verbal, and physical. Jins have deep compassion for all forms of life. Jainism offers a quiet, overwhelmingly serious way of life, a cultural insistence on compassion, a society of ethics that has dramatically changed the world and will continue to effect change. Jainism is an ecologically responsible way of life, which is non-violent in thought, action, and deed. Jina and the Soul The Jans are the followers of the Jinas. 
Jina literally means conqueror. He who has conquered love and hate, pleasure and pain, attachment and aversion, and has thereby freed his soul from the karma's obscuring knowledge, perception, truth, and ability, is a jina. The Jans refer to the jina as God. Origins of Jainism Originating on the Indian subcontinent, Jainism, or, more properly, the Jain Dharma is one of the oldest religions of its homeland and indeed of the world. Jainism has prehistoric origins dating before 3000 BC and before the beginning of Indo-Aryan culture. Jain religion is unique in that, during its existence of over 5000 years, it has never compromised on the concept of non-violence either in principle or practice. It upholds non-violence as the supreme religion, Ahinsa Parmo Dharma, and has insisted upon its observance in thought, word, and deed at the individual as well as social levels. The holy text Tattvartha Sutra sums it up in the phrase Parasparopadraho Jivnam All life is mutually supportive. Jain religion presents a truly enlightened perspective of equality of souls, irrespective of differing physical forms, ranging from human beings to animals and microscopic living organisms. Humans, alone among living beings, are endowed with all the six senses of seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, touching, and thinking, thus humans are expected to act responsibly towards all life by being compassionate, egoless, fearless, forgiving, and rational. The Jain Code of Conduct In short, the Code of Conduct is made up of the following five woes and all of their logical conclusions, Ahinsa, Satya, Truthfulness, Asteya, Non-Stealing, Aprigraha, Non-Possessiveness, and Brahmacharya, Chastity. Jain religion focuses much attention on Aprigraha, Non-possessiveness towards material things through self-control, self-imposed penance, abstinence from overindulgence, voluntary curtailment of one's needs, and the consequent subsiding of the aggressive urge. Vegetarianism Vegetarianism is a way of life for a Jain, taking its origin in the concept of compassion for living beings, Jivadaya. The practice of vegetarianism is seen as an instrument for the practice of non-violence and peaceful, cooperative coexistence. Jins are strict vegetarians, consuming only one-sensed beings, primarily from the plant kingdom. While the Jain diet does, of course, involve harm to plants, it is regarded as a means of survival which involves the bare minimum amount of violence towards living beings. Many forms of plant material, including roots and certain fruits, are also excluded from the Jain diet due to the greater number of living beings they contain owing to the environment in which they develop. 